So let's talk about Corona or Corona SDK. I all the time call it Corona rather than Corona SDK. It's just short. Corona is a cross-platform SDK for building games and applications. Now, they focus more so on games, and there's a lot of advantages to that. Some of the performance reasons, utilizing the GPU from the get-go, things like that, a sprite-based nature, targeting the markets that matter, such as iOS and Android, and Amazon sometimes, right? And you're mainly targeting the two OSs that matter, iOS and Android. It's written in Lua. 90% of what you're doing is written in Lua. Now you can build the plugins if you want for specific device features that aren't offered in Objective C, Java, and even C. But 90% of what you're doing is written in Lua. Okay, so you're gonna write once, deploy everywhere. That's that's the that's the the main value. Okay, so you, I want to develop once rather than spend lots of money for a small scale app in iOS and then lots of money for a small scale app in Android and then target all those different devices. Just hire one developer, write it once everywhere. Well, this is different. This is we're gonna hire a team of developers to build for all those markets and all those devices. For Android, we're gonna pare it down a little bit, devices that matter, right? But that's really where we're going with this. And if you, again, don't have features that are offered, you can write the plugins in the native application code for that particular platform or OS. So if you're American, you might not know this, but if you're European, Asia Pacific, Australian, Italian, you'll know what Flashlight is. Flashlight was a dream of Stephen Elop and others. Stephen Elop used to be, he was this, I think he's the CEO of Nokia now, but he used to be the CEO of Macromedia. His vision was to have Flash running on everything, every device, even these old calculators, right? That was his vision. He wanted Flash on there. At the time, his biggest challenge was the operators. The operators saw what happened to the internet with the telecoms who invented it and made no money. And they said, we're not doing that. The downside to that, having iron control of their networks, is nothing cool was on it, right? It took Apple to say, look, we know what cool is. Let, we'll let you handle the, the actual phone calls and the service. We'll control the experience. That changed the world, right? Unfortunately, Mac Media and Adobe didn't continue with that vision. They never could really get it off the ground. And by the time that Apple invented their own thing, Flash was out of the picture. But there's still a lot of value for doing cross-platform applications, right? If you have a worldwide perspective, iOS does control a lot of the market share, but it's not everything. You still have BlackBerry and emerging markets. A lot of these customers from B2B, they target those devices. So having some way to write once and deploy you know, everywhere does have a lot of business value, okay? So this Corona was what I consider the rebirth of Flashlight, right? The desire to have a great, quick, agile platform that you can develop with a really nice GUI layer and deploy everywhere, right? That's what Corona really was a rebirth of. And some of the same team members. Corona is by coronalabs.com. Corona Labs, formerly known as Antica Mobile, they're the ones responsible for building it. It comes with a simulator. So you run a simulator on your desktop. You can see the iPhone or the Android or the Nook, right? See the shapes, the rotation, play with the shake, right? Different, different resolutions. That simulator is what you develop and then you actually deploy a real build. When you deploy a build, it actually builds on the server. Now you can hit file save and because it's Lua, it's instantaneous rebuild in the simulator. But when you're building it on the server, it actually uploads your code, builds it with a proprietary compiler they don't want on your desktop, and it gives it back and it's really quick, even with the demo. So it's not, it seems kind of strange at first, but it's actually pretty fast. The last offering that they have is Corona Cloud. Corona Cloud is their cloud offering that has nothing to do with the actual Corona SDK on the desktop that handles all the game aspects of achievements, leaderboards, and everything else. Now, not normally used in enterprise applications, but the point is that is where their company's going. They're trying to be the one-stop solution for everything, and it's nice. So let's cover the APIs, the reason, one of the reasons I fell in love with Corona. And the first thing is Box2D. Now, if you're not familiar, Box2D is a physics engine that was developed for gaming. And it was developed by this uh, smart individual, I forget his name, but he, he worked at Blizzard for World of Warcraft and others. And it allows you to do real-time physics in a two-dimensional environment. So it looks, you know, you can play with the gravity, the physics, the, the, the friction and density of, of objects, and things like that. The game that popularized box city style physics was Angry Birds, right? We had these two-dimensional things that break blocks and rocks and different, you know, densities and things like that, different birds with gravity, right? Box city is what kind of illustrates bodies, and it performs very, very well in Corona because it's native code. Lua is just the bridge to talk to it. Another one with box to joints, weld joints, gear joints, um, gear gear motors, uh, weld joints, distance joints, pivot joints, all that kind of stuff, building cars. 
uh, World of Goo is one of the, the games to really popularize a game based around just joints in general. And forces dealing with gravity. Moonlander. Everyone knows Moonlander from the 80s, right? Or 70s? I don't know. How old am I? Box duty forces is one of the ones that are really fun to play with. You know, taking a bunch of barrels or rocks and making them fly away. Deal with forces. Uh, spaceship with different types of gravity and angles that you deal with, right? So Box Duty is in HTML5 and it is in Flash as well, but it runs very well on the devices. It actually runs in Corona. Flash and all those others, you know, at least when we started, didn't run at all. And the reason f mostly so is that it's native. You don't have to do anything tricky to compile it. It just works. That's that's the key. Corona has a lot of other APIs. I'll quickly hop to the interwebs to show you. The Enterprise APIs shows you how you actually include the header files, the cloud APIs specifically for all the cool things like achievements, analytics, which they have their own dashboard for, okay? You, you don't have to use the other analytics, but there's, you know, comes in there. All the authentication with Facebook, the game, user, the chat, if you're dealing with users and doing interactive, leaderboards for doing global leaderboards for your particular game, all the wonderful multiplayer stuff you're used to for Xbox and PlayStation actually interacting with your friends, news if you're dealing with kind of micro blogging to keep users up to date what's up with your application push notifications if you're familiar with pub sub such as um, I think PubNub was one there's a variety of push services out there but that's one of the popular ones for consumer based apps social connecting dealing with Facebook and Twitter really simple but it's different on the cloud right if it's on the cloud you actually can authenticate and everyone can post cloud syncing you can actually do blob saving to the sky awesome and users, right? Just dealing with users of your application so they can actually register. <coughs> From an API perspective, we're interested in really the ads, right? And the point is that it's not just for iOS with iAds, but you can also do Android with the different ones such as in, in Mobi, right? And uh, uh, They kind of abstract that away, but the API remains the same, okay? Uh, all the events for the accelerometer, all the OpenGL audio APIs, dealing with uh, in-app purchases via credits request, all the cryptography, uh, the game network, which abstracts again the iOS Game Center, the Android Google Play, and the Corona Cloud. You can use the same API for the most part for different game things, right? So they kind of abstract it away. The gyroscope, uh, different values and different platforms, but again, this, the API remains the same. If you're familiar with Flash or Flex, the display API is very similar to what you're used to, okay? So again, all these APIs are what I fell in love with because one line of code goes a long way. It's back what you know, Flash used to be around version five when they started Im implementing a lot of things like that. But these are some of these are third-party services that are integrated and work really well, like Google Maps, Facebook, and things like that. So that's API in a nutshell. Tap and touch is the last I'll talk about. Whether you're tapping or touching or multi-touch, some of the OS. Um, I'm sorry, excuse me. Some of the native things that they give you aspects. Uh, I'm sorry, access to. Um, you can do system level alerts. You can get the documents directory when you're dealing with file saving. So all these kind of things. And finally, the widgets API is, is an open source version of their component framework built on top of it. It's small at first, but it's growing. Um, and the point is that you can build apps that are somewhat responsive for devices and they've already started it for you versus you building it yourself, okay? So that's really what I fell in love with. That's a high level. Current APIs are pretty deep. So I've just given you the lightning tour.